Hey everyone, so attentive longtime viewers probably know my position on responding to responses to my responses, which is almost always refusal. It just gets a little complicated and silly when you get to that many layers of response, and usually I'd rather move on to something new anyway, so I tend to let people have the last word. And that's assuming I even see their response, which usually I don't, because I almost never search for my own channel name. But I was looking for something to respond to, and I happened to go to Emmanuel's channel to see what he'd been doing lately, and I found a video there with my name in the title, which I felt in the mood to check out, and based on the few bits and pieces I've seen prior to crafting my response, it's actually interesting. So, for the first time since March, here's a response to a response to me. Hey guys, what's up? I'm gonna be looking like over here, my camera's here, but I don't I don't like looking that way. I like looking this way, and I had to flip my phone. Anyway, whatever. I'm here to respond today to a, 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 a interesting YouTuber. Uh, his name, he goes by Logic. Now his name, I don't know who he is. He wears a costume and 3D glasses. I, I don't un really understand it. That's all right, nobody else does either. Not even me, if I'm being honest. Even after all this time, I sometimes stop and wonder how I wound up doing this the way I do it, because it's definitely unusual. Life's a roller coaster sometimes, isn't it? Um, I have some few a few questions for him because I actually did watch him. Uh, I've, I've seen his channel for, for the past like three, four years. I've seen a couple of his videos, uh, 10, 15, you know, a couple here and there. Um, I usually find them when I'm looking at the type of videos I want to look at and then he'll have like a response to some of those people. So I've known and got to know the channel of Logic through that way. Makes sense. I imagine a lot of my religious viewers have a similar experience. Either YouTube recommendations based on stuff they've watched or just search terms that happen to bring up my stuff along with the stuff they're actually looking for. I found your channel just recently by searching for the word atheists, plural, that's important, which is actually how I find a lot of the people I end up replying to. So I guess there's a tip for anyone who wants to wind up in one of my videos. You'll have better luck if you put that word in your metadata somewhere. Uh, so the first thing I want to say again is, is thank you to Logic because you pointed out a lot of things uh, in my past video that I made. I made this video uh, about hell and why people are just wondering why people are so, you know, that don't believe in God are so offended when they're talked to about hell. You're welcome, I guess. Actually, while we're at it, uh, thank you too for thinking seriously about at least something I had to say. I notice you've since deleted the video, so it seems that at least some of what I said hit home. Now, let me paint one thing clear. You don't go around, any Christian or whoever, don't, you do not go around telling people they're going to hell. That's a decision that God makes. That's a judgment God makes. You don't make that for people. Okay, but the more pragmatic reason is that if you say it to someone who doesn't believe in God or hell, they're probably just going to think you sound like a cruel bastard or, at best, someone who jumps straight to threats because you lack arguments. Okay, let me take this off. <clears throat> And I just wanted to respond, I just wanted to respond to Logic and say thank you as well and correct myself, all right? So the first thing, first things first, I will say that you are 100% correct, Logic. I was wrong. Cool. I don't know what you think you were wrong about yet, because I haven't watched the whole video, so I'm not going to comment till we get further in. But for the record, I don't actually make videos with the intention of convincing the person I'm responding to, even if my format is to present it like I'm speaking directly to them. My stuff is mainly about just entertaining myself with a bit of argument, because for some reason I find that satisfying, as well as just kind of trying to promote the criticism of ideas. And if the person I'm replying to happens to be convinced by anything I say, that's just a nice side effect. But it's still pretty neat when someone actually listens to what I say and changes their mind. It's actually really not that common for someone to reevaluate anything after receiving harsh criticism of themselves, and I mean people in general here, not just the religious. It's a difficult thing to do, because nobody really wants to think they're wrong, and even the people who are best at taking criticism to heart still fail at times. So the fact that you did it, and that you even replied to it publicly in a video after that, shows strength, confidence, honesty, and self-awareness. Kudos. I gave my life to, to Jesus Christ in 2017, and I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior in 2017. Okay, like uh, January, February, and I started going back to church after that. Uh, glad to hear you found a hobby. Uh, we're now in 2018. Thank you, God. I've been saved and all that. But I, I, I honestly, before that, relied on a lot of things that, that people would teach me and certain pastors over my youth. And... Uh, 
that's literally where I kind of got the notion that, oh, wow, angels didn't even have free will. That's like one of the reasons the devil hated us. And guess what? I was wrong. I am sorry. There's no need to be sorry. As you've noticed now, there are Christians on both sides of that issue. And there may always be because not only is there no way to objectively prove something about reality based on your interpretation of a story, but in the case of something like the Bible, there's usually no way to once and for all prove that your interpretation is the one intended by the author. This is exactly why Christianity is so badly fractured into sects with competing beliefs, all declaring the objective perfect truth of their interpretation of the details. But I will give one thing to you, which is that the interpretation that angels do in fact have free will at least makes the Satan narrative a little bit less silly. You never are supposed to preach the word of God wrong, but if you do, obviously come back and apologize. And also, this is a learning lesson for me to go back and before I do my videos where I'm talking, about God's word, I actually need to go inside my Bible, which is something I didn't really do before, I do now. Good, but don't just use it as a reference book. Open it up and read it. Every book, every chapter, every verse, in order, slowly, thoughtfully, with a highlighter, use those little sticky tab thingies, take notes, compare, contrast, try to find contradictions and flaws. If there are none, you're not going to find any, right? So you should have nothing to fear by looking for them. For someone who believes that the Bible is of the deepest cosmic significance imaginable, there can be no better use of your time than to understand it completely. And as someone deeply opposed to your religion, there's nothing I would rather you do. Uh, the video I'm referring to is about like four or five months old now and this is a video I never once imagined again that that a, a youtuber like logic will pick up on it didn't even have over a thousand views yeah that happens a lot if you were to go through all the videos I've responded to one by one you wouldn't find all that many with a ton of views and that's not because I'm trying to pick on the little guy or anything like that it's mostly because I often find stuff either through other channels I'm already watching or by just entering a search term like atheists that I mentioned earlier and sorting by upload date to find the fresh stuff but even if I didn't do that, I'd probably still end up addressing less viewed stuff, partly because I personally find it more real and interesting as response material, not necessarily to watch, but certainly to respond to. People talking into their webcams or their phones, just being themselves, telling me their ideas. Back when I started, that was actually what most people were doing in the atheist and Christian video response genre, and I still feel a real connection to that. Even though I started off with a green screen and like a production process where I record and film and all this, and even though I've polished up my presentation a little bit and started to write scripts to organize my thoughts better in advance, I still feel a lot like a representative of that community that I fell in love with, uh, I don't know, seven and a half years ago, mid-2011, and I still like replying to people who feel like they'd fit in there, and it just happens to be the case that that's not the kind of content that's usually getting a million views. I don't know how he found it. That's one question I have. Cool. Well, now you know. Sorry I don't have a more exciting answer. I didn't know about your channel before I found that video, so. By the way, I'm kind of enjoying taking a break to respond to these kind of questions. Take a little nostalgia trip before getting into the real arguments. It's nice. I'm just curious because I've watched this channel respond to so many bigger people before. And I, I just wonder, Logic, like, how do you find your videos? Like, do you sit down and just, like, type uh, Christian videos and then, like, you just pick one to respond to or something? Basically, but not that phrase, not Christian videos, because it'll probably only bring back, like, boring motivational videos, atheist videos, and random weird shit that's got nothing to do with anything. That's typically what I would find. Number two. I feel weird. Why? Can you answer why do you wear a costume and 3D glasses and don't show your face? Well, there's a couple of reasons. First, when I started my channel, I wanted to keep my online and offline lives kind of separate, especially for work purposes. I mean, if you feel the need to call me a coward or something for that, fine, but I just didn't really feel like talking about my snarky atheist debunk videos in the office. If it had been the other way around and I was making Christian videos, I would have felt the same way. But that was only a minor concern, because I didn't really think that anyone would actually find my videos. Now, that concern was secondary to the fact that I wanted to be able to edit my videos to flow really nice. But at the time, I absolutely hated jump cuts, and I wasn't good enough at line delivery yet to get good long takes without a lot of extra effort. Actually, I shouldn't say I wasn't good enough yet, I'm still not. And in fact, it went even further because I wasn't even interested in visuals at all. I really only wanted to do audio content to get my thoughts out there, but because it was YouTube, I needed something on the screen. And back then, people 
people weren't really doing this whole cartoon avatar thing. So after a couple of tries at other things, like throwing a bunch of random images I found on Google up on the screen, I thought, well, fuck it, I have this video camera I never use. I could just, like, put on a costume and have that be the visuals. So I happened to try a costume, but I didn't have much costume gear to work with, so this, or I should say this, was what I ended up with. There's no symbolism, but maybe there's symbolism in the total lack of symbolism. And anyway, having this costume let me heavily cut up and edit my audio, but usually not have to do any jump cuts in the actual video. Now, it might not be to your taste, but whether it is or not, you've got to admit it's visually striking and instantly recognizable. You're not seeing this face and not knowing who it is. If you've seen me before, you recognize me when you see me. It's good for branding. This is why I say it, not to throw jabs at you like you did to me the whole entire video, which I don't mind, it's cool, it's fine. Yeah, that's true, I did. Sorry. There's a reason a lot of people don't really like me. But then again, there's a reason a lot of people really do, too. Either way, if you want to throw jabs right back at me, or throw them first next time, or whatever, you're more than entitled. Go for it. Makes the discussion more entertaining for the viewers anyway, right? But... I feel weird not knowing who I'm responding to. I feel weird not knowing who's doing these videos. I feel weird. I'm not sure if you ever showed your face before. I, I haven't seen it. Yeah, I have a few times, but I don't make a habit out of it, especially not on this channel. I've actually had a lot of people tell me how weird it would feel to them to find out what I looked like. I guess I've been a faceless avatar for so long that for a lot of people, it stopped being weird that I am and started to be weird if I wasn't. It seems like for a lot of viewers, this face is more my face than my actual face. I do get this kind of comment an awful lot though, and I always wonder something about the people who leave it. Would you feel the same way if I didn't use a camera? Like if instead of filming myself with a mask on, I just had always used a cartoon avatar like this? Or even just started off doing a podcast with no visuals at all from day one? There's a ton of people on this platform who do both of those things, and I really wonder if they get the same comment I often do. I don't know, maybe the only reason I hear it so often is it's very clear that I have a camera, the ability to show my face, but then I don't show it on that camera. I mean, everyone has a camera these days, but not everyone shoves that fact right in your face. Is that the only difference? I have no idea. But I'm not sure how can such an opinionated person and such a person who spends his time uh, you're an atheist, right? So you spend your time for some reason following your faith of atheism because you have to have faith. I, 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 I really, that's just my opinion. To be atheist, you have to have faith. I, I, I don't know, but it, I feel like that takes some faith. Like people who believe in science, I feel like that takes some faith as well. Okay. Then I have to wonder what your definition of the word faith is, because if being an atheist or accepting science automatically means you have faith, regardless of what reasoning brought you to your conclusion, then I think you've stretched the word so far it seems to now just mean believing or not believing anything for any reason. Which doesn't seem very useful, because we already have words for those things. I once used the example of jabbing pencils in my ears. I believe that if I shove pencils into my ears, I'm gonna hurt myself. And it's not because I'm an adherent to the faith of pencils damage your ears ism. No, it's because it seems, to me, a probable conclusion that follows from inductive reasoning based on my prior experience with sharp objects being applied forcefully to human body parts. If you want to call that faith, fine, you're free to use words however you want, but don't expect other people to adopt your definition, and if they do, then expect the word to eventually lose any religious connotation and for people to just invent a new word for religious-style faith, putting you back to square one with this stupid attempt to put science and non-belief in the same box as religion. It's kind of a pointless exercise. But anyway, that's not the point. My point is, you spend all these time doing these YouTube videos, and do your fans know who you are? In a way, yes, but if you mean the name on my driver's license, then no, not most of them. And nobody really seems to care, because for one thing, this is YouTube. I don't know who you like to watch, but most of the people I watch aren't blasting their real name out to the world or even showing their face. It's not like they're running for Congress. But aside from that, who I am doesn't impact the quality of my arguments or the entertainment value of my videos. For all you know, maybe I'm a literal robot in a Freemason Hall basement somewhere, but my arguments still stand or fall on their own merits. In fact, in my particular genre, being faceless is actually kind of helpful, because it makes it harder to focus on me as a person rather than on the words that I'm saying. And I'm not what's important here. The words I'm saying are. I just like to know when someone's so like opinionated like this because everybody you, responds, you respond to on your YouTube channel, they're not hiding their faces, but you're the only one hiding your face. I'm not sure... I don't know, I'm just not feeling that. That's just my opinion. I don't feel it. That's fine. If it's not your thing, it's not your thing. 
And by the way, thanks for not going straight to You're a pantyhose-faced coward! My guy shows his face, so he's right and you're wrong! It might sound unbelievable that I actually get people saying that, but I actually get people saying that. In fact, I get that shit so often that right now my unmasked channel is named Pantyhose-Faced Coward. I say unmasked channel, what I actually mean is a channel that has one video of me with no mask on, but I do intend to actually use it for that at some point, I just haven't got around to it. Hell, I'd be fine taking my mask off right here and now if I didn't think a decently large subset of my audience would get pretty pissed at me. I don't know, I think being bothered by this might just be a matter of where you fall in internet culture and maybe along the timeline as well. I was born in 1987, I'm just the right age to have caught onto the internet during its big 90s surge. I've had unrestricted access since I was 10 years old, and I'm 30 now. To me, the internet was always this big heap of opinionated, argumentative, shitposty anonymous weirdos, who you could only recognize by their weird names and imagery. To me, that's what makes it so special. And while there's a whole different kind of charm to offline interaction, I always gravitated more towards the more, let's say, unconventional style of people online. And so when this trend started to come about of people insisting that other people should say who they are and show their faces, it sounded bizarre to me. Like, what do you mean who I am? My legal name? That's not who I am. I didn't pick it, it says literally nothing about me. To me, what's the relevance of a person's face when the appearance they choose to show to the world is so much more reflective of who they actually are than the arbitrary configuration of meat on their skull? What really makes a person who they are is what's in their head, which I'm sure that you as a Christian agree with, since you believe that the most important and eternal part of a person is not the body, but the soul. And the internet just happens to be where I show most of who I really am, unbound by any of the stuffy, self-censoring fakery that so often comes with off Line interaction, especially after you leave school where you can pretty much be whatever you want and enter the professional world where it's not so easy. I don't care if someone was never identified by anything but a username and a Twitter egg. If I interact with them enough in this setting, I'll know exactly who they are. Or at least I'll know it better than I would have if I'd met them anywhere else. Maybe that sounds like an old man's back in my day kind of opinion these days, but if so, I'm sad about it. I'm gonna respond just simply because I find it so cool, number one, that like I've been seeing you respond to a bunch of other people before. I can't believe I'm being responded to. Um, but it's so weird to me to not know who I'm talking to, who I'm responding to, who's behind these opinions, who's behind these words. Like, who are you behind there? Jim Carrey? Obama? Like, who, who is you behind there? I don't know. No, I'm not famous, if that's what you're asking. If I were, would it change your interpretation or opinion of what I've said? Because if so, you should stop letting things like that affect you. We're all just people, you know. No matter how many other people know our names. And if it wouldn't change anything, then really, who cares? Let's just get started. I want to apologize to everybody. For number one, saying, well, not number one, it was my only mistake. Calling Europe a country? Uh, which he latched onto and used for throughout a whole 20 minute video, and now there's a part two, which I haven't watched, but I saw the whole part one. Hmm. That's too bad you think I latched onto one thing for the whole video. I don't think I did, at least not any more than you did, because I switched up what I was talking about as necessary to reply accurately when you change topics. That's typically how a response video works. But okay, what was the one mistake I latched onto for the whole 20 minutes? Uh, it was very interesting. Um, you made me realize that I need to I need to really study and, and read the Bible more. Awesome. That's how a lot of my atheist friends started down the road to deconversion, so I encourage it. And um, definitely... Uh, be 100% with uh, what I'm putting out there, when, especially when I'm talking about God. Um, and I made that mistake in, in, in that last video where I said that angels didn't have free will and I was incorrect. I was wrong. I had to go back, read the Bible. I had to study a little bit and I was wrong. And I, I'm so sorry for that. I'm sorry if I misled anybody. I'm sorry if I confused anybody. Um, I'm sorry for any uh, Christian people that I've made look a little wacky. You know what I'm saying? A little... I'm sorry about that, we all make mistakes. Don't apologize so much, you're making me feel like I'm slacking off as a Canadian. So that's the one mistake I latched onto for the whole 20 minute video, is it? I'm not sure why you'd think that, so let's go to the script and check. Alright, we've got 18 instances of the string free will. The first two are where you initially mentioned that angels have no free will. Then there's a bunch where you continue to talk about that topic and I continue to reply to you. Notice that each time I discuss angels free will here, it's in direct response to you bringing it up. And instance 13 is where, after a prolonged break from the topic, I make my final reference in the entire video to the free will of angels in response to you once again mentioning the free will of angels. And the final five instances are in reference to human free will, because that's where the conversation went, so they're not relevant. 
every time I said the word angel, it was in that same section about angels' free will, only talking about it because you were talking about it. Same with every reference to Satan in relation to free will. Now, from the very first to the very last section where I talk about angels' free will, there's 959 words in this script. And like I said, somewhere in there is a prolonged break. But I'll give it to you to be generous. So in the video, that amounts to pretty much exactly 5 minutes. From 1 minute and 40 seconds to 6 minutes and 40 seconds. It's a decent chunk, sure, because you spent so much time on it. But as you say, the whole video is over 20 minutes long. This angel thing was just some insignificant tangent that I briefly followed you down. The main bulk of the video was about the justice of human suffering in hell. Oh, and that weird tangent you had about humans inventing the economy? So what makes you think that I latched onto that one mistake for the whole 20 minutes, when it didn't even come up once after 6 minutes and 40 seconds? I've definitely learned from this experience, and I'm gonna do it better from now on, so thank you Logic for making my Christian videos and, and my beliefs stronger, my faith stronger. Uh, thank you for making these videos stronger because now I feel very inspired. You're welcome for the push to make your opinions a tiny bit less stupid. It's only the tip of the stupid iceberg, especially since it doesn't actually fix the really stupid thing about your belief in angels, which is that you think they exist, and that your reason for thinking they exist is that the Bible talks about them. But it's a start. Study that Bible and think real hard and maybe you'll figure it out. The Bible even says not to just believe anything you hear, even from the Bible blindly, even from the church blindly. That's where I felt and, and was mistaken, you know, because people, certain people I've trusted have told me things in regards of angels not having free will. And I just rolled with that because I'm like, well, this person knows this person's been Christian for a while. And I didn't look, I, I didn't read for myself. Good, you finally learned not to blindly trust what other people tell you. Now, once you realize the people who wrote the Bible are just as human and just as unworthy of blind trust as any other human, that's when you'll really start thinking about the other things you blindly believe. I'm glad that logic, that one part of your video, the smartest thing you said is telling people to go read Revelations and think for themselves. I also agree with that. Go read Revelations. Matter of fact, go read the whole Bible. And then, yes, also think for yourself. Yep. And that means don't let the Bible's authors tell you what you should think about the Bible. If someone writes a book that says that book is true, that doesn't make that book true. Oh, and speaking of which, some even better advice I can give you than reading the Bible is to read the Quran. It's really similar to the Bible in a lot of ways, and it was dictated by a self-proclaimed prophet of God who insists over and over and over that the book is true. But you don't think it's true, even though he says he's a prophet. Think carefully about why you trustingly accept the divine inspiration claimed by one person you've never seen or met, but not that of another. You know, Christians have the tendency to sometimes do that and, and we miss the ball and we miss the mark sometimes, especially because when you give your life to God, sometimes you're so excited. Now you have like purpose and you feel fulfilled and you feel happy and you feel full in your heart and you feel like you just want to go out there and fight for God. But don't do it uh, irrationally. You know what I'm saying? I do know what you're saying. Don't let the appeal of an idea get in the way of finding out if that idea is actually true. Don't let emotions cloud your reasoning. Just because some belief makes you feel excited and makes you feel like you have a purpose and makes you feel fulfilled and makes you feel happy, keep thinking about it rationally. Don't let what you wish was keep you from ever finding out what is. And Emmanuel, it's great that on one very minor issue you've managed to put emotion aside and think critically about whether what you said actually makes sense, but don't stop there. In fact, if you really want to reach the truth, or at least avoid being deceived along the way, don't ever stop. Anyway, so let's hop right into the video. I'm sorry this is taking so long. Oh, that's fine. It's not like I'm helping us get there any faster. Anyway, so let's hop right into the video. In part two. Yes, I'm two-parting it. In fact, based on how far I am through the video at this point, I'm probably three-parting it, which is a terrible idea. It always kills my views, but I have a lot to say. And I know we're just now starting to get to the good stuff here, but I was having fun. It ran a little long, sue me. Part two gets a lot more intense, and part three even more so, so come back and see, will ya? I think I'll publish other videos in between the parts, though, so it's not just one big chunk on my video page. See you soon, folks.